Welcome back to Spraker Homestead. I'm Nikki, and today we're going to talk about how you cannot feed past genetics. So a common thing I'm getting uh, out of the folks that contact me about rabbits is we're getting a lot of people who get their rabbits to seven, eight, nine months, right about breeding age, and realize they are way off the mark in terms of weight. And uh, the follow-up to, to that is usually, hey, what can I feed to make these rabbits hit weight? And, uh, we, you know, I like to ask a lot of questions, go back and forth, make sure they're not underweight, anything like that. But a lot of times what's happening is the rabbits look fine. They're in good physical condition. They're just not at the weight for the breed. Unfortunately, when this happens, you cannot feed your way past bad genetics. If your rabbits are not on pace to hit the weights they're supposed to, to hit, there is no amount of feed in this world I can recommend that is going to get you there. Uh, especially in the big class rabbits, I will usually give an extra month to rabbits that are, you know, maybe a, a runt in the litter. Maybe one that I really, really like that's just not growing as fast. That's something I'm going to note in my, uh, in my rabbit breeding notes for later on. Maybe I'm going to pair a slow growing doe with a fast growing buck. But regardless, I don't breed anything here that doesn't make weight. And the reason for that is that it's just a nightmare. It, it, it takes as much cage space for me to raise an animal that is correct to my standard and going to provide me good meat and good show rabbits, because that is what I do. Um, it takes just as much cage space as it takes, you know, to raise a good animal as it does one that's way off the weight range. When I've got an animal that's only making eight pounds out of, you know, the 10 to 12 they're supposed to make, uh, not only am I tying up cage space for a good quality animal, I'm bringing potential problems into my breeding program. I'm breeding small genetics, um, possibly small, slow growth rates, and that's not something I want. So let me take these two does, and if you watch the other video where we talked about size, you'll recognize these gals. This one here is Zsa, Zsa She is a satin doe. She's uh, about three years old. She's eight pounds. Now this here, um, <laughs> I say here, her name is here. <laughs> here I stand. She is uh, a 10-month-old American doe, and she is 11 pounds. And I know from the front, especially the way here is stuck all the way at the bottom, it's really hard to see the size on these girls, but when we turn them this way, you can see that here takes up a whole nother five inches of this carrier. Uh, Depth-wise, they're pretty pretty on par for depth, even though here's kind of sucking herself to the bottom. Um, this is what we're talking about. A satin doe should be this size. Uh, maybe not the same body length, but she should be weighing exactly what here does at, at 11 pounds. So it makes a huge amount of difference. Um, there is no good reason that you would keep a small doe. No matter how good her type is, she's just going to set the program back. Now, she's actually here for a side project in my Harlequins. And so her size, even though she's small, she is the appropriate size for a project I'm doing with them. Because they are um, in that 8-pound weight range. So when I talk about the fact that you can't feed your way past genetics, I usually when I tell people, look, you're going to have to cull that animal, remove it from your gene pool, um, you know, you just can't feed your way past it. I always get the, well, should we have been feeding our junior something different? If they are growing at the appropriate weight, uh, at the appropriate rate, uh, there's not much you can do. If they look healthy and they are growing, it's just genetics. Uh, people have a really big tendency, especially in the rabbit industry, to immediately blame feed. Uh, I've had a couple of nicknames for these people over the years, but these are the people that you see in groups that are, well, six months ago I was feeding calf mana, and six months ago I was feeding mana pro, and six months ago I was on Purina show, and I didn't like that, and I was on Neutrina. It's not the feed. <laughs> not the feed. At some point you have to accept that it's just poor genetics. If you cannot get rabbits to get where they need to be, it's just bad genes. And unfortunately, you can't fix that. Um, we see that a lot in people who bring juniors to shows or intermediates in the bigger breeds that will have a pretty decent type, but maybe they're hollow in the loin. And the first thing people will say is, what can I be feeding them and fill that out? You can't. They either have good genes for it or they don't. The only time that you can feed your way up 
is when you know for a fact that rabbit is skinny. You're feeling way too much bone. Um, in most cases, that's not going to be what it is. It's simply a matter of poor genes, poor muscling in a rabbit, and you need to find better stock. Now, knowing that we can't feed our way past genetics, the next thing most people ask is, can we upbreed our genetics to a point? Uh, be very, very cautious. If you are trying to make an 8-pound dough into something that should be 11 pounds, that's too far to reach. I don't care how nice her type is. It's just too far to reach. If you're talking about a dough that hits 9 and 3 quarter pounds, and so it's just a little bit off and she's killer, you can try pairing her to a mid-range buck, so something that's going to hit around 10 pounds, and be very cognizant of breeding her offspring up. But you cannot fix it by feed. It's just not something you can do. I have seen people over the years at shows up feed their rabbits to get them into a weight class. Usually it's a, an older junior or a very young senior trying to get up into a senior class. And it's not worth overfeeding them. All you're going to do is end up with really pudgy rabbits that if you're doing meat, don't breed well. And if you're doing show, don't show well. So there's no benefit to trying to overfeed them to bump them up at all. Um, really just keep the rabbit at the weight that it needs to be. And if it doesn't make it, it doesn't make it. That's where you send them off to another program, off to freezer camp, pet home, whatever it is that you do with rabbits that don't make your program. Um, but don't do yourself the harm of thinking it's a good idea to breed them in. All right, guys. So there is my little talk about uh, how you cannot uh, feed your way past genetics. Unfortunately, it's just kind of something that happens. And it's not just in rabbits. We see it in everything goats, birds, all of it, you just can't get past the fundamental genetics of an animal. Um, and I should also mention, you know, I get this sometimes where people go, well, it's a runt, so don't use runts in your breeding program. Um, they're runts for a reason. Whatever that reason is, they're runts for a reason. Um, so that is it for my little talk today. If you've got questions, leave them down in the comments. You can also send me an email at srhomestead uh, at yahoo.com, Instagram, Facebook. I'm around all those fun places. And just in case you don't know, <laughs> you guys are going to be stuck here in this for a while. Uh, our cookbook, Cooking with Rabbits, Recipes for Everyday Life, is now available on Amazon. I'm sure Kanan will kick a link into the description. Um, it is available both as a print-on-demand paperback. It's full-size, 8.5 by 11, uh, or a Kindle version if you've got Kindle. That is the only two formats we have available right now, um, but those are available. So we will see you next time. Happy homesteading.